We're looking at 100 to 200 years worth of damage. We know we've changed the balance a lot since Europeans have come to Australia. And a lot of it now has gone way past being able to fix itself. And, and without some sort of remediation, it's just gonna keep getting worse. They're just gonna become the new Grand Canyons of erosion. When we get in early, they're easy to fix and cheap. But some of the ones that have, are so big, you can park a semi-trailer in them, you know, then you're talking big cost to fix them. And it's just important wherever we can to get in early because the, the amount of soil loss, productivity loss, biodiversity loss is frightening. And it's, it's a desertification, it's, it's an aridification of the landscape when those features develop to that extent. So standing on a, what just looks like a mound here, <clears throat> but it's actually the soil that's left over. A lot of the, it's, all the soil from around here is eroded uh, and, and this is all that's left. It gives you an idea of the, the volume and, the, and the, the extent of the erosion when you can see that this is what the level used to be and we've lost all of that out there. a federal government funded project to have been working with landholders looking at restoring their landscapes and making them more drought resilient and improving the biodiversity again. Do you look at this country here and your first thought is well it's looking fairly healthy at the moment it, you know, it's grass around and it, it doesn't look too bad but behind us here you know when you really look at the landscape this was a, a wetland here and if you look closely, you can see out there that a lot of those big trees were starting to die that were living in that wetland. And it was an amazingly simple little thing that you'd often just drive past. And at the bottom of this, this swampy area, there's a little erosion spot that just started. And even though it's grassed up now, it had started to incise. It only dropped, you know, only cut in a few inches, but it was draining that wetland prematurely, which is why those trees were dying. And left over time that would just cut deeper and deeper. That's a massive wetland, like it goes back a long way and it affects a lot of country and it's all draining out this tiny little strip here, which as I said, is growing grass at the moment, but it's, it's become the drainage feature for that big area. So a simple little bank put in there with the grader a couple of weeks ago, we haven't had any rain on it just yet. Now, when that wetland's full, it's going to overflow along a stretch maybe up to a kilometre that way, that's all very flat country over there. And there's a long section at that other side too, where that water will just trickle over gently. The difference is going to be that that wetland is going to become a lot wetter. The biodiversity will increase. And instead of that water just draining off down the erosion feature, it's the excess water, once it's full, is going to trickle out right across a big swathe of, of floodplain again. For the tiniest little bit of work, impacted a massive area, very low cost. Um, Troy Coon, we're at Nickerville Station, Quilby. When we came and inspected it, it was bare, um, well and truly flogged. We gave it a spell and then you now we've started this development work. We brought on Glenn Landsberg from Southern Queensland Landscapes. Yeah, we. Basically went around with Glenn and picked some spots, um, choke points, put some timber structures in them, and Glenn did a heap of marking out, and we put a heap of low profile spreader banks in, some of these bare clay pans to try and get them to come back. Um, within 12 months, we've seen great results of that. First 12 months, a lot of weed, but after that, the grass came. It's very surprising. <laughs> 